morning, everyone. It is an honor for me this morning to be the person that gets to bring the word. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always an honor for me to stand on this pulpit. Usually I'm standing on this side. Usually I am interpreting for the 6 p.m. service. And that is an honor and a privilege that God allows me. But this morning I have the special privilege of standing here and bringing the word. Yes. So first, I'd like to thank all of you. Good morning. I'd like to thank you for receiving me. I would like to thank God, Jesus, the head of the church, for this honor that he allows me. Amen. We give him all the glory. I'm very thankful and I honor Apostle Guillermo Maldonado. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for this great honor. We don't take this lightly. I would like to honor this morning also all of the Ephesians of our church from whom I have learned so much and continue to learn. I honor also my mentors, Pastor Gerald, Pastor Deborah, and really all of you. Thank you so much. But I would also like to honor all of you in a very special way because every time I'm up here, I am very, very aware that I am speaking to the sons and the daughters of God. So I honor all of you this morning, those of you that are here and all of those that are watching online. Thank you so much. And as we start this morning, I was remembering something. When I was in school, college, and school, you know when you take a test, and all of us have done that, you sit down and you go to take your test, you're sitting there, you want to do well, and there is a teacher there. Unless, of course, you're taking an online course, that's a different story. But I mean if you're taking a class in person or if your exam is proctored, which means that there is somebody there with you, even if you're taking an online course. And you see, usually when it's the teacher or the professor, that they're either standing at the front of the class or they're standing at the back of the class. But in every case, they're standing there like this. They know every answer on your test. You might be struggling. They know every answer. But even if you're freaking out on the inside, they stand there like this. Has that ever happened to you? Well, you know what? Sometimes when we are going through difficult moments, sometimes we don't understand why is this happening. Sometimes you've been praying for a breakthrough and praying for that and claiming this promise and you don't see it happen. And you're sitting there and you're like, God, I don't understand. I don't understand. This is the year of the open door and you're going to get it, get it, get your breakthrough. And you're all into it and you're excited and you're doing the threefold cord. You're praying, you're fasting. Fasting, you're giving, you're in expectation. This is the year. So you're dressing up a little nicer, coming to church just in case, because this is the year. And you're so excited. And some people do vision boards, other people don't. But in any case, you're excited, you're waiting, and you don't see sometimes what you're praying for right away. And you're sitting there and you're wondering, you can't, you think, I can't quite hear God on this. I don't understand. I don't understand this particular situation. This doesn't it makes sense or I can't figure that out I don't quite know why it's happening I'm waiting for a breakthrough I believe in the breakthrough I believe in the power of God to break through I believe God is a healer I believe he's a provider so that's not the problem it's not unbelief so you're sitting there and you're wondering what is going on and you're, you have problems and you have difficulties perhaps like many of you have today Perhaps many of you are waiting. You're waiting for that healing to manifest. And you know God can do it, but you're waiting on it to manifest. And you know that that child of yours that's rebellious right now, you know God can turn his heart around. You know God can bring the prodigal back, but you're still waiting on it to happen. You're still waiting on those kingdom connections. If you're single and you want to be married, you're waiting on God to connect you to the right man, to the right woman. You're waiting for God to bring the right 
right people into your life. If you're in ministry, you're waiting for that door to open so that you can preach, so that you can minister. You have a calling of God on your life. You have a big responsibility. You're waiting for God to bring people that will want to commit to the vision of Jesus, that will want to work so that you don't feel like you're pulling it all by yourself. And you're sitting there and you're struggling and you're wondering what is happening because it seems like God is not telling me what to do. It seems like God is not speaking to me right now. Well, could it be that your faith is being tested? Could it be that you are sitting in the spirit and you're sitting in a moment where your test, it, your faith is being tested and God is right there because he promised that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So he's right there, but you don't hear him speak. Well, that's because he's standing there. He's never left you, but he is letting you go through a test. He is letting you go through a test. And when we learn the lesson in class, in a course that we're taking, if we've learned the lesson, we sit through the test, we get a good grade. Well, in the spirit, if we've learned the lesson of waiting on the Lord, of praying, of standing in faith, even when we go through a test, do you know what's on the other side of the test? A promotion. What's on the other side of a test? A breakthrough. Do you know what's on the other side of a test? That which you have been praying for. So let us learn. Let us learn this. Let's go to the scripture. 1 John 5, 4. Let's look and see what the scripture says. It says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith. Shout our faith. We overcome by faith because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We overcome by faith. So then the natural question is, or the logical question is, well, what is faith? Let's go to the scriptures again. Hebrews 11, 1. And the Bible tells us there, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Go ahead and read that again. Now faith is the substance. I love that. Go ahead and read it with me. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Family, let me tell you this. Faith is supernatural. Say that. Faith is supernatural. That is the only way that you can know that you know that you know that you know that you have something that you're still hoping for, that you have something that you still can't see. Can you imagine it? Look at it this way. Look at it this way. Imagine that faith, faith comes from God. Faith is supernatural. Faith is now. You see, the Bible says now faith is, is, is in present term. So, of course, it's a continual present state So or tense. So, of course, faith is now. It takes faith to walk with God. Do you know why? Because you can't see him. It takes faith to walk with God because everything in the spiritual realm you usually can't see. So it requires faith. Faith is a key that unlocks doors in the spiritual realm. Faith is the starting point for the supernatural. You've heard it prophesy and it is true that 2024 is the year of the open door. But guess what? You're going to need faith to see the open door. You're going to need faith to walk through the open door faith is required to unlock doors in the spiritual realm any door because nothing works in the kingdom of God without faith in fact let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 look at what the scripture says the scripture says that 11 6 says without faith it is impossible to please God. You must know how to access faith because without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to get a breakthrough without faith. It's impossible to see a healing without faith. It's impossible to see a deliverance without faith. 
But then some people think, well, yeah, that's you. I don't have that kind of faith. Yes, you do. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Let's go to Romans 12, 3, please. Mm -hmm. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone, to who? To everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Each one has a measure of faith. Tell your neighbor this morning, you have a measure of faith. Now tell him, use it. Say, I have a measure of faith. I will use it for your faith to grow stronger it has to be tested that's why we're back to that classroom example faith has to be tested in order for it to become stronger Psalms 66 10 says this for you O God have tested us For you, O God, have tested us, but it doesn't say to destroy us. It doesn't say to discourage us. It doesn't say so that, oh gosh, it's mid-February and I'm going to get it, get it, get my breakthrough. But where's my breakthrough? It's mid-February. No, it says, for you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. Faith is tested so that faith can become strong. Why? Because without faith, we cannot access anything in the kingdom of God. The Bible speaks about two men who built a house. One built it on a rock, the other one built it on the sand. Have you read that parable? Well, when the storms came, when the winds blew, when it began to rain, something happened. And that is one of the houses remained and the other house simply crumbled. When your faith is tested, will you stand or will your faith crumble? Will you stand? That is the question for you this morning. Will you stand? All of us face challenges. Even those of us that walk in from the parking lot and start to say hello 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 all the way up to the pulpit and back down even those of us that walk in and try to be friendly and try to be gracious and smile all the time every single one of us goes through challenges every single one of us because we live in a fallen world because there's a real conflict between two spiritual kingdoms the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness and other times because God wants to test our God wants to test our faith and every time God tests our faith it is an opportunity for us to stand in faith you know what God is looking for God is looking to see if he can trust us with more that's why our faith is tested why the Bible says that when we are faithful over the small things over little things what happens God puts us over much so God tests us in smaller things will we when we're going through that trial when we're going through the test when our faith is being tested who are we do we turn into nasty little creatures who are we do we abandon our family do we abandon the church do we abandon each other do we get bitter how do we handle it do we stop serving do we stop tithing do we stop speaking the way that we are called to speak who are we are we still dependable when your son is going through problems when your son is battling an addiction when your son is battling depression even if he's cutting himself because he is under demonic assault who are you do you stand are you dependable do you show up do you show up for others who are we when we are under stress who are we when we are being tested Hmm? who are we because the bible says all things work together go ahead do it like this all things 
all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You don't understand what I'm going through. No, I probably don't know what you're going through. But what I do know is that God will cause all those things to work together for good because you love God, because you are called according to his purpose if you pass the test. When you are being tested, instead of getting anxious, instead of falling into depression, instead of allowing that to grip you, instead of walking in here in the morning, good morning. Hey. Uh, sister, brother, can you come and help us today? You know what? I got to do me right now because I got so much going on right now. You don't know. You don't know, because if you knew, you would not ask me to come in here and serve for one hour. You would not do it. Mm -hmm. Who are we? Who are we? God is getting you ready for another dimension. God is getting you ready for a promotion. Hey, let me say it to myself. Jackie, God is getting you ready for another dimension. God is getting you ready for a promotion. Let's go to Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Let's look at the life of Abraham. Thank you. Now it came to pass, after these things, that God, what? Mm -hmm. God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you God tested Abraham's faith. Can you imagine something like that? Yes. Can all of us join in and say, what? One, two, three. Thank you. What? God tested Abraham. He wanted to see what Abraham had learned after all the years of walking with the Lord. What have you learned about the character of God? What have you learned about God's faithfulness? What have you learned about God? Have you learned it yet that God has put his word over his name? And that if God told Abraham that he was going to make a great nation out of his son, then God was going to do something. He could trust God. What have you learned of God up until this point what God wanted to do was bless Abraham. He wanted to give him a transgenerational blessing. Not just give him an Isaac. He wanted to give him a transgenerational blessing. Meaning that it would go on and on and on. God wanted to bless him beyond what Abraham could see at that very moment. But while Abraham was taking that test, God was silent. Like when you're sitting in that class and you're taking that test and it's trigonometry and you're like, what is this? Because when you have a multiple choice test and you have A, B, C, or D, at least you have a 25% chance of guessing it. Yes? Praise the Lord. But if it's math, either it's right or it's not. And when they don't give you multiple choice, what you say is exactly what you say. You look at that paper and you're like, what in the world? And if it's algebra, you're like the Pythagorean theorem, foil method, the first outer is in or last. I remember that. But Well, Abraham goes up to worship and God tells him, take your only son. After I gave you a promise, take him, go up the mountain and sacrifice him to me. So while Abraham is sitting there and his faith is being tested God is silent. Like maybe you are going through a test today and you're wondering why is this happening? I don't get why this hasn't happened yet. Why is that happening? When is this going to break? When is this going to open? And you're wondering and it seems to you like God isn't giving you the answer. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 5. And it says, therefore... Having been justified by faith, 
What does faith do for you? Let's look at that first. What does faith do for you? What does faith do for me? It says, therefore, having been justified by faith. So first, faith justifies us. Amen? And it says, we have peace with God. Faith gives us peace with God. It says, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse, through whom also we have access by faith. Say access faith is what gives us access to the power of God faith is what gives us access to see God move on our behalf in the spiritual realm why because without faith it is impossible to please God so then we have to go to God through Jesus by by faith by faith by faith we access him and it says we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God the word of God tells us that faith justifies us the word of God tells us that faith gives you peace it tells us that faith is what gives you access. This is the kind of faith that comes and equips you so that you can go through any situation of your life in any area of your life because it is the faith of God. And as we continue to read the scripture, it says, and not only that, but check this part, but we also glory in tribulation. That means we're glad about the tribulation, knowing that tribulation tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope now hope does not disappoint knowing that tribulation we need to know that a test is an opportunity we need to know that when our test is being tried have you ever spoken to somebody and you're like hey god bless you and they're like god bless you how's it going girl or if you're a man it's like yo bro you know um you know I started the year really yeah started the year and you know what I started a business how's it going six figures how long a month and a half wow and what else and I met this wonderful woman and we got married in two months and we got married on a Saturday and on Sunday by noon she was pregnant with triplets and it's just the glory of God and then I got this contract and they told me that they're gonna give me this special deal because I'm tall because I'm tall too and now I have a car a house a business a breakthrough four babies and you're like wow praise the Lord See, if there isn't envy in your heart, you can rejoice with your brother. Yeah? If you don't have something twisted in your heart, you can genuinely be glad when you see God moving for other people. But then he turns around and he asks, how are you? Well, praise the Lord. No, I'm still believing, you know. Oh, good. What are you believing for? Well, you know, I'm still paycheck to paycheck, but believing that the next paycheck is going to be like, you know, the cows in, the, in Joseph's dream, the big fat paycheck. And, you know, I'm believing that I'm going to be able to start a business and it's going to happen. And I'm, I'm, how's your kid? well I'm believing they're gonna come back to church you know because he's still struggling with drugs you know but and, well, okay well then and so the person's trying to be polite and they're trying to find a good angle of conversation and how's your mom doing well her knees are really bad praise the Lord you know she can't get up from the chair but she's rejoicing in the chair well you're like okay well how's your health well you know I got something going on in my back you know so oh okay so he's trying to I like your shoes he doesn't know what, he, what to say to you. But as we're going through these situations, we understand that we are walking in a moment of testing. And that when our faith is being tested, it is an opportunity. It is God that is up to something. Even when the situation seems terrible, even when the situation seems like there's no way, God can make a way where there seems to be no way. There is no situation that's too dark. There is no health condition that he can cannot heal there is no family that he cannot restore there are no finances that if we honor God if we are good stewards if we do things the right way that God won't honor us through there is no darkness that God cannot bring us out of there is no test sent to us by God that is meant to sink us it is meant to refine us it is meant to strengthen us I don't know what your test is your test may not be 
my test. But hey, a test is a test. And when we are before the Lord, we may be tested. Some people are tested in their health. Some people are tested in their finances. Some people are in their marriage, they're tested. Other people are tested in their lack thereof. Some people are tested with their children. Other people are tested with their parents. There's different tests that come to us in different areas. And we could be tested in any area, just like Abraham was tested. Now, Abraham was tested, but look at this. Abraham had received a promise that he would have a son. Previously to that, him and his wife had been married for many years, but they didn't have any children. So the angel of the Lord came and prophesied that his wife, who was 90 by the time it happened, would bear a son. So Abraham had to wait 25 years for that promise to come to pass. Amen. Say, woo! 25 years. And once he finally had that promise, obviously he loved his son. Obviously it was that thing that he always wanted. But you know what happened also? His whole life became about his son. Has it ever happened to you that you want something so bad that when it finally comes, your whole life is about that? Oh my God, I want a job, I want that job, I want that job. And you get it, and it's like 24-7, you are about that job. Oh, I want this business, I want the business. And all of a sudden, you don't have time for anything else because it's all about the business. I want to get married, want to get married, get married. You start praying in tongues, married, 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 and you start doing all of this. And when you finally do, it's all about her or it's all about him. Now you don't have time for your family. Now you don't have time to serve God. Now you don't have time to pray. You, don't, you can't come to pray in the morning. You can't come pray in the afternoon. And you can't come pray at night. Well, do it on the phone. I don't have a phone. I can't pray on the phone. Okay, can you come serve once a month? No, I can't do that either because I'm married now. So I can't come here for 30 minutes. And, you know, and your whole life becomes that. And it could be anything. Plug in anything. I'm just using that example. But it could be anything. So Abraham's life was all about his son, logically so. It was his son. He loved his son. But it was also the answer to his prayer. But it was also posterity. And that was so, it's important today. But it was especially important in this part of the world during biblical times. If you didn't have an heir, that was something that it, ref it reflected like a failure on your part. It reflected, if you were a man and you didn't have an heir, it was like you had failed in life. You didn't have anyone to carry on your name. You didn't have anyone to receive your goods once you pass so it was a huge big deal and this was something that God had blessed him with but when God is working with our faith God is preparing us to give us bigger things do you know that sometimes God allows our faith to be tested because he wants to entrust us with a promotion because he wants to give us a greater measure of spiritual authority because he wants to promote us in ministry but do do you know that even a good thing can come to you and because you are not prepared for the good thing, that good thing, instead of becoming a blessing, that good thing can become a hindrance that keeps you from serving God, that causes you to come out of balance, that causes you not to have time for people, not to have time for God, not to have time for anything because now you're all about that business which was a blessing that you had prayed for. So God prepares us even for that because you know what even for promotion when any person and it doesn't matter who you are any 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 person suddenly shoots up in prominence in influence they won't be able to handle it because it's not just about having a gift it's not just about having potential. And please let me not even get into the part of it's about you looking the part. It isn't about any of that. You need to have the character to be able to hold what God wants to release to you. And do you know why? 
Do you know why? Let me, let me tell you by the word. Do you remember the story in the scripture when Peter had been out fishing all night? Remember that? The Bible says that he had been out fishing all night and this man wasn't a novice. This guy was a fisherman. He was professional. He knew what he was doing. The Bible says he had been out there all night and that after being out there all night, he didn't catch a thing. So when he comes back to shore, Jesus tells him, well, go back out and catch your nets and Peter I'm going to paraphrase in other words said well yeah I was out there all night but I'll go on your word in other words okay I'll do it for you Jesus I'll do it because you're asking me to I don't even think this is going to work but Peter goes out and at least to his credit he obeys or partially so Jesus said to cast the nets he casted a net, but you know what the Bible says? That so much fish came in that his net nearly broke, that his ship almost sunk. He had to call in his uh, the other guys. The other guys came in with their ships, and they could not handle it either. It was just so much fish. Do you know that in the spirit, a blessing has weight? I just, you know what, I don't know mentor but or, or disciple leader, you know, because I've been here for so many years and I've been a hop leader and I've been a mentor. Like, when am I going to become an elder? Like, come on. You know, I do this and this and this and that. Did you know that blessings in the spirit have a weight? And a good thing can come upon you. And if you don't have the spiritual stamina to take it, it'll break you. A blessing can break you. A blessing can get to your head and all of a sudden you're promoted you go from being the armor bearer to being a minister like boom overnight and you don't go through a process and you know what happens it breaks you and all of a sudden nice guy who used to walk in good morning good morning God bless you he's like um bishop <laughs> you know and all of that starts to arise in you and you know the Bible says that God gives grace to the humble a blessing can break you. So even God, God wants to work. When we are going through these times of testing, when our faith is being tested, God is up to something and it is something good. When we wait for God's timing, and yes, sometimes in some cases, there is a generational curse, an operation, and if so, you can break it. Yes, sometimes there may be a spirit of delay, and if so, you can rebuke it. You can break its power, but sometimes it's not a generational curse sometimes it's not a spirit of delay sometimes God is testing your faith and that's why you do the threefold cord and you're like okay well I'm praying I'm fasting I'm giving I'm singing I lift up my hands where's my breakthrough God is working God is testing your faith and I am telling you by the spirit of God go through the process I am telling you by the spirit of God let God develop your character is it easy no it's not do you want it to end yes Yes, you do but the faster we cooperate with God the quicker we get through the test the quicker we get to it the quicker we'll get through it and so the Spirit of the Lord tells you let me work go ahead and tell your neighbor let him work character will give you longevity character will give you longevity because it's not about gifts won't give you longevity gifts may get you in the door but gifts can't keep you in the room if you don't have the character to stand you need to have the character to stand without character you will not last without character your relationships will not work without character you will not grow let's go back to what the bible says romans chapter Chapter 5 verse 3 where it talks about rejoicing and not only that the word says but we also glory we rejoice in tribulations knowing that tribulations produces patience and perseverance character and character hope shout hope 
hope. There is hope. It doesn't matter what it looks like today. It will not end up that way. It doesn't matter what the enemy is telling you. God says that he has put his word over his name. And if he said he would do it, he will do it. It doesn't matter where we are right now because Jeremiah 29, 11 says this. And I love this verse. This verse says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. This is God speaking. So when the doctor speaks to you, when uh, people speak to you, when your bank account seems to speak to you, where what the calendar is speaking to you, like, hey, it's mid-February. I thought you were going to get it, get it, get your breakthrough. Where's your breakthrough? Hmm? Right? Or does that not happen to anyone else? Yes, praise the Lord. I know it does. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Go ahead and say, I will end well. Say that. I will end well. Say that. And this is very important. It's very important, family, that you know this. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is not an emotion. In fact, 2 Corinthians 4.13 tells us faith is a spirit. Faith is a spirit. And since we have the same spirit of faith, faith is a spirit. Faith is the product of the word of God spoken by the Holy Spirit. Because faith comes by hearing the inspired word of God. The word of God endures forever. And faith is a product of the word of God. If Romans 10, 17 tells us so. Then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God faith is activated in our lives it is released it works through our mouth use your faith to activate your mouth faith is not silent even for salvation the Bible says you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth and until you don't say it you are not you need to speak it the activate faith is activated by what you say if you don't speak it it's not faith you need to speak it for the way that you activate and you release and you let your faith work is through your mouth. And the word of God says forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So whatever God has spoken concerning your life is settled. As long as you line up to his will, as long as you obey him, because even if God speaks a thing, God will not force the thing on you. You must say, like Mary said, Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. Go ahead and lift up your hands this morning and tell the Lord, Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. You have called me to be a disciple of Jesus, to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. So let it be unto me according to your word. The Bible says that you are the head and not the tail, that you are above and not beneath. Let let it be unto me according to your word. The word says, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So, Father, I say, let it be unto me according to your word. Yes, Lord. Keep clapping, please, so I can drink some water. Go ahead. Your faithfulness endures to every generation. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will not pass away. So it doesn't matter what it looks like now, family. It doesn't matter. Say it doesn't matter. Is it easy? Nope. So we can be honest and we can be real. Yes? It's not easy. 
but we're not doing it in our strength because it's not by power and it's not by might it's by his spirit and we know that when our faith is tested it's being tested by God like what Marco was singing here and the praise team was singing God is a good father he knows how to give us good gifts and every good and perfect gift comes from above from the father of lights as long as my faith is moving forward, I will stand. I believe, God, that I will not fail the test. Whatever test you are going through today, at whatever level, if it's in your spiritual life, if you feel it's to get your prayer life going, if you feel it's you want to begin to serve in a different capacity and that door hasn't opened for you, if it's a problem that you're having in your family with your parents, with your children, with your brother, with your sister, in your finances, in your health, whatever area it is, whatever area that test may be, say to yourself this morning, I will pass the test. I I will pass the test. Genesis 22, verse 13. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. God did not want to take Abraham's blessing away from him. He wasn't trying to take Isaac away. He was testing his faith so that he could take him to another level. Abraham had to go through that test and what happened to Abraham is about his son. Not just about his son but it was about God wanting to take him to another level if you finally start in your business if you finally are able to get that breakthrough if you're able finally to see that thing that you've been praying for praise God for that thing in fact praise him before it shows up in your life but never let anything become an idol in your life never let any one thing be more important than seeking God than serving God success in ministry is not defined by everything that we've accomplished success in ministry is defined by finishing well success in your life success in my life it's not about what we accomplished here and what we accomplished there it's about what we look like at the end Jesus himself lived a sinless perfect life the son of God who came and he died on the cross for our sin when he was hanging on the cross what did he say it is is finished he finished well apostle paul after he served god and he wrote all the epistles and he started the churches and did everything he was going to do he wrote i have ended my i have ended my course i have finished my course it's about finishing i have fought the good fight i have finished my course and until you and until i don't one day hear the words after the rapture of the church or if the moment that we have to go home to be with the lord until we don't hear the words well done good and faithful servant we are not finished we are not finished we are called to end well and part of doing Doing well in life is letting our test, letting our faith be tested. It's cooperating with God. It's allowing God to do in us what he wants to do, even when it's not fun, even when it's not enjoyable. But it's better to say, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to focus and I'm going to bring to mind everything that I studied so I can pass this test and get a good grade. It's better to say, Father, for I will not forget your faithfulness. I remember that you are good I remember I can trust you and in that moment as you pray as you stand as you believe but you are yet to see the breakthrough you're waiting for you know your faith is being tested but that it's a glorious thing because it's not the devil testing your faith it's God allowing your faith to be tested so he can bless you so he can prepare you for every good thing that he has for you and after Abraham passed the test God took him to another level. And let's look, that, look at that as we end today. Genesis 22, 16 and 17. And he said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing. Abraham, because you passed the test. Even if it was hard, you passed the test. 
it was uncomfortable you passed the test you wondered when's it coming you passed the test because you passed the test and have not withheld your son your only son blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies God took him there from having one son and then maybe two sons from addition to multiplication God told him right there that he was being promoted and God multiplied his seed the nation of Israel the natural nation of Israel are descendants of Abraham but you know what all of us also are spiritual descendants of Abraham we are the result of something that someone many thousands of years ago decided to be faithful to God and through Jesus Christ who later came from the natural lineage of Abraham today we have the blessing of God we have access to the blessing of God and Abraham had a transgenerational blessing that even reaches us today however none of that would have happened if he had not passed the test God will test our faith God does test our faith and he is watching us to see how we're gonna react not just here in church where we have each other where we can smile and sing I know I'm gonna get it get it get my breakthrough but what are you like when you're by yourself what are you like when you're talking to your family at home what are you like when you're talking to your friends to the people that you trust who are we Hebrews 6 12 and I'll end on this the Bible says that if we are faithful over the little, he will put us over much. We have got to be faithful to pass the test that you do not become sluggish. But look at what the word says. But imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises for some of you God is watching you right now he is testing you pass the test go ahead and tell your neighbor pass the test tell your other neighbor pass the test and say I will pass the test pass the test some of you are going through very very challenging times very hard times your faith is being tested others are still waiting to see the answers to your prayers your faith is being tested others even feel satisfied where you are you think you're good you think you have everything you need but God wants to take you higher so God is testing your faith or God will test your faith God has more for you than what you have right now every promise of God in Christ Jesus is yes and amen don't quit keep going tell your neighbor I just feel like you somebody needs to hear that don't quit don't quit don't quit keep going keep going but you know what stop complaining stop complaining stop complaining stop being bitter you know you can't fake that because the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so even if you try to fake it if you're full of complaining and you're full of bitterness and you're discontent in your heart that's gonna come out break with that stop complaining stop complaining don't let the enemy fill your mind that it's not going to happen because it hasn't going to happen. Has anybody had the experience that you're sleeping and first thing you open your eyes in the morning, you're, like, you're asleep, right? You're asleep, you're a back sleeper. Say you're sleeping and then suddenly you open your eyes and it's like the first thing that pops into your mind is it's not going to happen. It still hasn't happened. You're still waiting. It's the same thing. Nothing has changed. Hey, it's February. Hey, it's March. Hey, vete diablo. Go devil in Jesus' name. That's right. Don't stay stuck where you are. Now that you know what's happening in your life, because I, can, I felt, as I was praying, I felt that in my spirit, I could feel that there were so many people that were asking. I felt that there were so many people that were asking, what's happening? What's going on? I don't understand. I don't get it. What's happening? Father, speak to me. Go online, YouTube, prophet so-and-so. Oh, no, that's not it. What's happening? Prophet so-and-so, can you pray for me? And there's nothing wrong in asking for prayer. Pastor so-and-so, would you pray for me? Pastor Gerald, pray for me. Nothing wrong with that. It's great. 
Elder Maria Angelica, Dr. Shannon, can you please pray for me? Because you're anointed and you have a ministry anointing and an entrepreneurial anointing. So if he prays for me, then maybe. And that's good. It's fine. It's fine to ask for prayer. What's not okay is that unrest. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Oh my God, it's not going to work. Oh my God, that's not God. So the Spirit of God, because he's a good father, the Spirit of God, because he loves you, is telling you, I am testing your faith. I'm testing your faith. And I'm testing your faith because I have something good for you. I'm testing your faith to prepare you for that blessing that I said was going to come. I'm preparing your faith. I'm preparing your faith. So today as we finish, if you can help me in the piano, please. Now that you know that your faith is being tested, what must we do? What must we do? First, we need to repent. We need to repent for not trusting the goodness of God, for not trusting the character of God, for thinking that God would take care of everybody else, but he would forget us. For thinking that somehow God missed us. We need to repent for thinking, you know what? This guy gets up here and he does the announcements and they ordain him as the Pope. And over here, you're working, working, serving, working, 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 serving for years, and you feel overlooked. And you think, because man doesn't see you, that God didn't see you. God sees you. God says that he is not unjust to forget anything that you do to serve the brethren. And you think when you serve your family at home, your husband, your wife, your grandparents, your parents, your brother, your sister. You think God doesn't see that? He sees it. He sees it. Our wonderful media team isn't there to catch it, but God saw it. Let's repent for thinking we're going to be the exception. We are going to be the exception in that we will see the fullness of the glory of God. We'll see the goodness of God in the land of the living. In that sense, we will be the exception. We will stand out from others in the world. But we won't be the exception before God's eyes that he won't see us. So I got to go ask so-and-so to pray for me because God doesn't hear me. Of course he hears you. Go ask for prayer. I'm not saying don't. Go get prayer. But believe that when you pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, God hears you. God sees you. God has not forgotten you. So if you let that come up into your heart, believing that you're going to be the exception, that it's like a game of musical chairs, or whatever, whatever kind of music you listen to, and all of a sudden the music is going to stop, and you're going to go sit down, and you're going to be out of gas. What a luck. Repent for that this morning. For agreeing with that in your heart. Repent for that this morning. What else must we do to pass the test? We need to intentionally fill ourselves with the Word of God because faith comes by hearing the Word of God. So be intentional about it. If you're believing God for healing, guess what? Listen to messages on healing. If you want to be healed, go to the Scriptures. And the most important thing is the Scripture. Go to the Scripture first and look and read and find the Scriptures that speak of healing and say that to yourself and repeat it in prayer and declare it speak it speak it speak it you don't have to stand in a pulpit to do that you can do that at home speak the word say i am healed by the stripes of jesus speak that over yourself say god is faithful to complete the good work that he's begun in me uh, not only in salvation but in every other area of my life speak the word but be intentional about it where do you need faith do you need it in finances look for what the scriptures say about finances look for messages apostle has wonderful messages the other men and women of god do to fill your heart with the word of god what else must you do speak it 
faith must be spoken continue to declare that God is good continue to declare that God will make a way continue to declare that you will see what God has promised you the Bible says let God be true and every man a liar forget about what you see forget about what people say and speak the word believe the word and finally receive a supernatural divine grace this morning to persevere in faith so I'm gonna ask you church to stand and I would like to ask the pastors would you come and the ministers and the elders we would like to minister to you this morning I know that the word has already begun to minister to you and as all these leaders come up I'm gonna ask the church oh good thank you for standing church I'm gonna ask you all begin to pray in the spirit begin to pray in the spirit the Bible says that we pray in the spirit that we're speaking mysteries unto God pray in the spirit as the apostle has taught us when we pray in the spirit we're engaging in spiritual activity when you pray in the spirit the spirit of God begins to confirm the word in your spirit I'm not interested in speaking my words I want the word of God to pierce your heart for it is the word of God that's sharper than any two-edged sword go ahead and pray in the spirit go ahead church yes as you pray in the spirit you're stirring up the spirit realm as you pray in the spirit the spirit of God is confirming the word in your spirit and I'm gonna ask that you all listen and repeat this prayer say after me say father thank you for speaking your word to me I repent for doubting you I repent for complaining I repent for agreeing in my heart with feelings of depression discouragement and anxiety I renounce every depression anxiety and discouragement in Jesus name Father, I believe your word. You are God and you cannot lie. You are a good father and nothing is impossible for you. In Jesus' name, I know, I decree, I declare, and I prophesy that all things will work together for my good because I love you God and because I'm called according to your purpose in Jesus name I receive a supernatural grace to stand to persevere I declare I will pass the test I will pass the test my faith will be stronger I will go to another level and do everything that you have called me to according to your will and your purpose in Jesus name amen thank you so much for watching today's message if you are watching today and you have not made the decision to accept Jesus into your heart, I want you to repeat this prayer with me out loud and say with me after me, Father God, I recognize that I am a sinner. I repent of all my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. 
Jesus, come into my heart right now. Amen and amen. If you did this prayer, thank you so much. If this video has been a blessing to your life, please share it with your friend and subscribe to our channel so don't miss out any other video or live broadcast. Thank you so much. We love you, bless you. See you next time.